the Birmingham Police Department, along with the FBI, have located the remains of a three-year-old child who we believe to be Camille Cupcake McKenna. This is tough. It's a tough moment for our city, a tough moment for this family. Definitely a tragic update to tell you about tonight. A body believed to be little Camille Cupcake McKinney found tonight, discovered in a dumpster. Investigators searched tirelessly as they hoped to bring the little girl home alive. Crews have searched for more than a week for Little Cupcake. Tonight was hard news to hear across the nation. Yeah, we have team coverage tonight. Jeff Eliasoff, Bria Douglas, and Mary O'Connell. Let's start with Jeff tonight. Who was at the news conference earlier this evening? Lots of folks here tonight, and of course, you know, it's often been said that our greatest hopes and worst fears are never realized, but tonight, Birmingham's worst fears were indeed realized. Camille Cupcake McKinney, kidnapped 10 nights ago, is gone. Relentless searches, as you said, and the prayers of millions ended in the worst possible way this evening. We found to this evening remains of a child that we believe to be Camille. Her remains were found inside of a dumpster, and they were, they were recovered inside of a landfill here in Birmingham. Camille was abducted from the Tom Brown housing community during a birthday party Saturday night, October 12th. A few hours later, an Amber Alert was issued, which was ultimately expanded to every state in the region. Camille was last seen wearing a pink shirt, leopard print pants, and no shoes. She was never seen alive by her family again. Within hours of her kidnapping, a suspect vehicle and two people of interest were taken into custody. Those people are both in custody once again. Tomorrow we will be screening warrants for kidnapping and capital murder against Patrick Stallworth and Derek Arisha Brown. Ms. Brown has been in custody on a probation violation since the investigation began. Stallworth was rearrested tonight. He had a previous child pornography charge. It's been an awful 10 days for Camille's family, the Birmingham community, and the people who tried to find a little girl who will never come home. Our investigators, along with the FBI, have worked tirelessly 24 hours a day to locate this young child and to bring her back home and to hold those accountable who were involved in her disappearance, in her kidnap, and ultimately her demise. The Amber Alert, the thousands of dollars in reward money, and the endless searching to no avail. Three-year-old Camille McKinney is gone. We're live at Birmingham Police Headquarters tonight. Jeff Eliasoff, WVTM 13. This case has really stirred emotions around the city and even the surrounding areas. WVTM 13's Mary O'Connell continues our team coverage tonight from Birmingham Police Headquarters. And Mary, of course, a lot of emotion there tonight. Well, you could feel the heavy and broken hearts here at Birmingham Police Headquarters tonight. Police Chief Patrick Smith said Camille McKinney not only grabbed the hearts of this community, but also the nation. At many points, Chief Smith and Mayor Randall Woodfin took their time to really grasp the message they wanted to convey to this community. Here's a piece of what Police Chief Patrick Smith wanted to say to the city this evening. I hope this message is not lost to young mothers to grandmothers and to the entire Birmingham community. It only takes a split second. We can no longer assume that everyone is a part of the village that's trying to raise the child. The chief ended that message saying we need to work hard to protect the children of this community. When Mayor Randall Woodfin stepped up, he spoke directly to Camille's family, reminding them that they are not mourning this precious child alone. A three year old has been snuffed out from her family. And as I think about my own nieces, as many of you all think about your own daughters, your own granddaughters,
a year from now, she's supposed to be prepping for pre-K. This is tough. It's a tough moment for our city. The mayor also told every the mayor also told everyone to hug their families a little bit tighter this evening, and he wanted people to remember not to point fingers tonight, but instead to stand in solidarity and pray and lift this family up in prayer. In Birmingham, Mary O'Connell, WVTM 13. Well, let's send it over to Bria Douglas right now. She's live at Tom Brown Village. Bria. It is absolutely quiet here at Tom Brown Village. There are no people outside walking around. No one here showing any visible display of emotion or consoling each other. Uh, other than a couple earlier today, a man and a woman had a very loud outburst saying, say it's not so, say it's not so. They threw the baby in the dumpster. They were clearly shaken up. But other than them, just not a lot of people out here and the ones that I did speak to, though, they said off camera that what happened to Cupcake was just very sad. It was wrong what happened to her. Just a young, innocent child. Uh, the community is just, I believe, in disbelief and in shock that something this tragic started right here at Tom Brown Village. And uh, earlier this evening, we did actually see a man by the name of Corey Wise. You might remember he was a part of a documentary or a Netflix series, When They See Us. He was a part of the Central Park Five, now known as the Exonerated Five. He was here and offered his condolences to the family. Here's what he had to say. Sorry to hear. Sorry to hear. Was it your time to go, baby girl? But may you rest in everlasting peace along with your household that's missing you right now. Now, Corey Wise was here for something totally separate of, than the events that happened here in, in Birmingham. He had a prior engagement. Um, but again, we are here at the Tom Brown Village. Not a lot of people outside. It is a very somber mood, though, from the people that I, were, that I was able to speak to. Uh, for now, live in Birmingham, Bria Douglas, WVTM 13. Well, lots of support tonight for the family of Camille. This discovery breaking hearts across the city, state and nation. Lawmakers are even sharing their thoughts and prayers tonight. Here's a statement from Governor Kay Ivey. She says, given the tragic news that is breaking this evening, I offer my heartfelt condolences to Camille's family and profound thanks to law enforcement and all of the volunteers who have worked tirelessly in search of this precious little girl. The heart of our state is broken, but our resolve must be to do everything we can to avoid this tragedy from happening to another family. Our prayers are with Camille's family and all who have been touched by this nightmare. Also issuing a statement, State Representative Terry Sewell. Cupcake was an innocent baby. My prayers are with her family and the entire Birmingham community during this unthinkable time. We must continue to fight, find strength and unity, even in the face of heartbreaking tragedy hold the ones you love close. Well, there's been an outpouring of support in the past week and a half as the community rallied to find McKinney. Yeah, one of the most recent displays was over the weekend. Members of the little girl's family, as well as loved ones, even strangers, gathered at St. James AME Church to pray for Camille. In Hoover, a neighborhood tied purple ribbons in front yards. The color was the little girl's favorite. The woman who organized the show of support says it was a way to show McKinney's family people were thinking about them during this difficult time. And just a few days later, volunteers came together for an event they called Cupcakes for Cupcake. And it was meant as a fundraiser to contribute to the Crime Stoppers reward. People went above and beyond buying all 600 cupcakes in a matter of hours. And organizers say that they exceeded their goal of raising $2,000. We want to take a minute right now to take a look at the timeline of this case. Yeah, it all started at 830 on Saturday, October 12th. Camille was abducted from a birthday party at Tom Brown Village. And then just after midnight, authorities issued an Amber Alert for the three year old. Later Sunday morning, they held a news conference and at nearly 1:30 that afternoon, Birmingham police released the first photos of an SUV believed to be involved in Camille's abduction. 
And about five hours later, they released the picture of a person of interest. Late that evening, police announced they'd found the SUV at a condo in Centerpoint and took one person of interest into custody for questioning. Monday, October 14th at 10.30 in the morning, the police chief held a news conference announcing two people of interest were in custody and they'd expanded the Amber Alert to surrounding states. Tuesday at 11.30, Governor Ivey issued a proclamation for a $5,000 reward and then at 6 o'clock, police announced the two people of interest were being held on charges unrelated to the missing child. Wednesday, October 16th, around 10 this morning, a, that morning, a large number of police swarmed an apartment complex on Jefferson Avenue in response to a tip, but they did not find Camille. A few hours later at four, the police chief made a plea to surrender the child at any safe place, a fire station or a hospital. Crime Stoppers announced another reward, $20,000. Then Friday, October 18th, police released surveillance video from the birthday party at Tom Brown Village showing two men near two children, one of them identified as Cupcake. And sadly, tonight, police announced remains believed to be McKinney found in a dumpster. Again, two suspects are now in custody. We'll continue to follow this story for updates anytime. Download the WVTM 13 app and sign up for alerts to know the minute anything changes. This has been really hard for all of us here in the station. Of course, we've been talking about how this has really gripped the state, the community as a whole, even outside of Alabama. And I got to say, I'm angry, mm -hmm. I am frustrated, and I am profoundly sad for the loss of this little girl and the pain that her family is going through right now. We are definitely experiencing this pain with Camille's family.